You know, over the last 30 years, the Toyota Camry has consistently been the best-selling passenger car here in the US. Now with Toyota selling between three to 400,000 units every year, if you've never heard of a Camry, you probably live under a rock because so many Americans buy this vehicle as their family car of choice. Now, unfortunately for Toyota over the last five years, Camry sales have really started to fall off of a cliff to the point where last year, Toyota only managed to sell around 294,000 units, a number so low that the company hasn't seen that number on a Camry sales figure since about 1993. So some of you may be asking, what gives? What's wrong with the current generation Camry? This model came out roughly in 2017, and it's about the same time that Camry sales started to fall every year to the point last year they sold, they saw a 12% drop in Camry sales versus the same time in 2019. So to answer that question, this week Toyota has loaned me a 2021 Camry SE four-cylinder nightshade edition with the company's new all-wheel drive system. This is essentially the Camry that most people are going to buy here in America because it has an as-tested price of just under $30,000 and it is very modestly priced and modestly equipped for most American buyers out there. So if you guys are wondering what happened to Camry sales, today we're gonna to go over the history of the Camry and we're gonna find out exactly why Camry sales have started to fall here in America. Hey guys, I wanna interrupt this video for a special announcement. Now, did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent this is to do something about it while you still have the hair left. This is where our sponsor comes in, Keeps, because Keeps is one of two FDA approved products out there that can specifically target the hair loss and prevent even more of it. Now the best thing about Keeps is you can get the treatment directly sent over to your home. Keeps even gives you access to a doctor online where you can speak with them directly and they can determine exactly which treatment will work best for you. Now prevention is the key here and treatments can take up to four to six months before you start seeing results. So the sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Now personally, I've been using Keeps since March of 2020, so over a year now, and I'm really happy with the results. My hair has come back in a much fuller state, and all I have to do is just take one pill a day and use a mousse in my hair basically twice a day or every time that I get out of the shower. So if you're ready to take charge and do something about the hair loss, please be sure to visit the link in the description below. Go to www.keeps forward slash redline where you can save up to 50% off of your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com forward slash redline. And now let's get back to the video. Now at their peak, Toyota managed to sell nearly 450,000 Camrys here in the States. Nearly a half a million sales is no slouch for any manufacturer. So to understand what makes the Camry so successful, we need to take a step back and talk about the history of the Camry. Now, first of all, I'm sitting in a 2021 model. This is now in its eighth generation. Toyota actually gave it a slight refresh for 2021. And just like Camrys of yesteryears, there are a lot of traits about a Camry that make it so appealing to just American shoppers. It's very easy to get in and out of. It's built incredibly well. It's really reliable. It has a reputation, of course, for being extremely reliable and having ex excellent build quality. While it also has remained a relatively affordable vehicle. I mean, this car in general has a, an ass tested price of just under $30,000, which sneaks in, of course, under the national average new car transaction price, which is now closer to $40,000. But of course that is now, but how about back then? The Camry first started here in America back in 1983. That's right, 1983, nearly 40 years ago. And back then Toyota needed to replace a vehicle called the Corona or the Crown, which was their mid-sized family sedan. But of course, Toyota was kind of in their heyday in the 80s and the 90s. The Japanese brands were really in their you know, prime time with having cars that are just exceedingly well built, much better than the American offerings and offering better fuel economy, a better value, and better reliability than all of the other competitors out there. Now, the first generation Camry, of course, ran from 1983 to about 1989, whereas the second generation Camry um, had the similar kind of boxy, three box shape of the first generation model, but Toyota kind of smoothed out the lines. It was when they introduced a V6 for the first time in the Camry. 
Uh, and then of course, in 1992, Toyota introduced the third generation Camry. And this is a Camry that is actually very close to my heart because it was my very first car when I was 16 years old that I inherited or that I basically was passed down from my mom. Um, the 1992 to 1996 Camry was known as the third generation Camry. And that was again, one of the first times that Toyota, the Camry became the best selling car, passenger car here in America. It was known very much for its oval shape. Mine was an LE with a 2.2 liter four cylinder that had only 125 horsepower. It was without a doubt the slowest car that I ever drove, but it was also incredibly well built, incredibly reliable. I drove it for about four years until about 2008 where I replaced it with a Honda Accord. Now in 1997, Toyota redesigned the Camry yet again, now moving of course to its fourth generation model. With that new generation, they introduced of course, more comfort on the inside, slightly more technology and a more box or shape. That generation, again, was the best-selling passenger car, except for the year 2001, where it lost that crown to the Honda Accord. Uh, in 2002, Toyota gave the Camry again a full redesign, and this time, uh, a lot of the publications really took notice because Camry won, I believe, Motor Trend's car of the year in that year, and then again in 2007. That generation Camry, uh, the fifth generation model, ran up until 2006, where an all new Camry was introduced in 2007, now in its sixth generation model. That's the Camry where Toyota really tried to elevate the Camry's sportiness. They really introduced the SE trim again. They introduced a much more powerful three and a half liter V6, which offered around 268 horsepower, the most in the segment at the time. Remember, there was a kind of a horsepower wars with Honda and with Nissan, especially Nissan with the Altima when they introduced a three and a half liter V6 back in 2002. Now in 2012, Toyota of course gave the Camry another full redesign, now moving into its seventh generation. This is the Camry that you probably see a lot of on the used car market because it ran until about 2017. This Camry in general, well, introduced a lot of new technologies for Toyota. You started seeing more driver assistance tech features. You started seeing bigger and better infotainment screens. Um, you started seeing a bigger Camry as well that offered more backseat space versus a lot of its previous generations. However, this current generation model uh, was last introduced in 2018. And this is the Camry that Toyota, especially Akio Toyota, their CEO, wanted to show Americans or the world that a Camry could be sexy. I remember at the Detroit show when they first showed off this generation, Toyota or Akio Toyota said, Camrys are now sexy. Now, I think that was pretty much stretching words there, but you should know that Camrys in general have gotten a lot sportier, especially this current model where it moved to their TNGR, TNGA architecture, which just introduced a much sportier, a much stiffer bodied Camry that handled a lot better versus a lot of its predecessors. Now, it was Akio Toyota's need to introduce a much more sporty and youthful Camry because let's face it, Camrys started to develop a reputation in the 90s for being a car that were was for your grandmother. It was basically an old person car because Camrys just got so smooth, they got so quiet, they got so comfortable, and they just got so boring. So for this generation Camry, Toyota again went to their all new TNGA architecture, which made the car a lot sportier, a lot sleeker, a lot better handling than all the previous Camrys. I mean, take a look at this example that I'm showing you now. This is the SE Nightshade package. Now, if you guys know Camrys, SE has always been the sportier offering Camry. They've been offering an SE Camry since I believe 1993 and the SE now is the mid trim in the lineup there's actually an XSE trim above the SE so this one here is more modestly priced but being the nightshade package you have features like black painted 18 inch wheels you have black accents of course on the door handles on the side mirrors you have that black rear spoiler on the back. This is all supposed to give the Camry a sportier, youthful look, along with the platform, which, as you can see, lowers the roof line. They made this car significantly wider. The SE model gets sport tuned dampers, just like the SE, XSE version. And really, this is definitely the sportiest and sleekest looking Camry that you can buy today. I'm just not entirely sure a lot of Americans are taking notice because there's another vehicle in Toyota's lineup that stole the sales crown away from the Camry back in 2016. Now, of course, in case you guys couldn't figure it out, the vehicle that stole the sales crown away from the Camry was this car right here, the Toyota RAV4. In fact, 130,000 more people who probably used to buy Camrys ended up buying this model last year. I was actually one of them because this is my personal 
2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. And as you can see, for it being roughly the same cost as the, as the Camry, it's pretty easy to see why so many buyers would end up choosing this. Compared to the Camry, it is shorter overall, yet you get far more interior space. You get the ability to put things on the roof if you guys get the accessory roof rack. And just like the Camry, Toyota offers the RAV4 in so many different ways that you can customize it. This one here is a Prime. It's a, the XSE trim. It gives you the two-tone roof color combination that you can also get on the Camry. This supersonic red is also available on the Camry. And in terms of the space, you get basically more legroom in the back seat. You get more headroom and you get a crap ton of more storage space and cargo capacity because this is a crossover. And because RAV4s are also offered in all-wheel drive, you get significantly more capability. As you can see, this car has around 8.6 inches of ground clearance. Compare that to like the five inches that you get in a Camry, and it's pretty easy to see why you would probably end up choosing this for roughly the same money as opposed to a family sedan. SUVs just make more sense for a lot of American buyers. So obviously with many of Americans buying crossovers instead of sedans, it forced Toyota and other manufacturers, of course, to make their sedans a lot sleeker looking, looking in terms of the design. And as you can see, the current Camry definitely has a front fascia that could basically wear a Lexus badge right down to its polarizing front grille. This has been on the market for nearly five years now, and honestly, I still have not gotten used to the front end of this car. I really was hoping Toyota would refresh it and kind of tone it down for 2021, but as you can see on this SE Nightshade, that really isn't the case, especially with this silver exterior color. You still get features like LED headlights, which are standard. You get Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, which of course includes automatic braking and adaptive cruise control. But the SE version has this massively large grill with the black accents in it. Uh, and some of the fake venting that kind of looks overwhelming in my opinion, especially when you have it in certain color combinations. I mean, this would probably look better in black, but really with this silver color and all the black trim, it's a little bit overwrought for my taste. Now, if you're not the biggest fan of the front end styling of the current Camry, thankfully the rear definitely tones it down a bit. I actually think the rear of the Camry is a pretty sleek looking machine. I like the SE models and the XSE models, especially with the rear spoiler. This one here is painted black. You can see the Camry badges are blacked out. There's a nice little small SE and all wheel drive badge to remind people that you paid an extra $1,300 to get all wheel drive on your Camry, which by the way, was the first time that we saw all wheel drive on a Camry in over 30 years. And you can see the SE model includes a rear bumper diffuser area, and some models even throw in quad outlet exhaust, especially if you guys go for the XSE trim. It really makes the Camry look a lot sportier and a lot more youthful. So overall, I think Toyota's done a better job with the rear end styling versus the front end styling. But also keep in mind, this SE model has a much cheaper looking look to the taillights because these are an LED combination. Go for the XSC and the XLE and you'll get a full LED taillight design and a full LED headlight design. You see this right here? This car is nearly $30,000 and it has a switchblade key, very volkswagen S, but it doesn't have push-button start or smart entry on the doors. For a car that's nearly 30 grand, I have to pay an extra $1,300 to get that feature, so I have to stick a key in the ignition. I know some of you are probably rolling your eyes at me because, oh, I've been using doing that. What's the problem with sticking a key in the ignition? Well, it's 2021, and those are just technologies that once you have them, it's really hard to not have them anymore, especially when you're buying a brand new car like this. So my recommendation, at least get that option for this car. So I wanna talk a little bit briefly about the driving characteristics of this current model, uh, because Camrys have gotten so good in terms of driving dynamics. However, you should keep in mind that a lot of crossovers have actually gotten a lot better as well. A lot of these SUVs drive exactly like cars. And if you guys want all wheel drive in your Camry, which could effectively replace a crossover, you should know it's only available with this two and a half liter four cylinder. And this engine makes 202 horsepower. It's one less versus the front wheel drive version. It's paired up with an eight speed automatic transmission. which is actually not bad. It's a smooth shifting transmission. Doesn't shift very quickly, but you don't really notice it in the background and it's much better than a CVT that you find in some of the competitors. Um, this car in general, the engine, however, doesn't have the typical Camry strengths. Strengths. It's not the smoothest four cylinder. It's not the best sounding. You really need to go for the V6 Camry, which is not available on something like the RAV4, but the V6 Camry also makes it very nose heavy and you don't get all wheel drive with the six cylinder model. 
But overall, out on the road, the current Camry just feels like an ordinary car. There isn't really much that stands out. I mean, yes, the TNGA platform helps with the handling and the sportiness of this car, but a lot of the other competitors and a lot of crossovers basically match the dynamics of the Camry. The slow acceleration means you're going to get to 60 in around nine seconds with this four-cylinder and all-wheel drive, which is let's be honest, slow in today's modern times, especially with all these electric cars that are coming. And in terms of the driver assistance, I'm missing the key crucial factor that a lot of people want in their driver assistance vehicles, and that's blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert. It is optional, again, a $1,300 extra for this car. The seven inch display here, um, got a tablet style look for 2021, but the screen itself looks massively small. You need to go for the upper trims to get a nine inch display, which would get rid of a lot of the black bezel that's surrounding the LCD touchscreen. At least you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it's not the wireless variation. And the screen resolution is just kind of lacking. Uh, and it really doesn't help this otherwise kind of drab interior with it's all black you know, interior with some of the silver contrasting pieces. But overall, the Camry just doesn't feel quite as special or as standout-ish as it used to. There's something about this car that makes it feel like Toyota is still resting on their laurels, whereas I want them to throw me a bone a little bit, give me a feature that surprises me. That's something that I constantly get from its uh, rivals, especially from Korea. So yes, everybody is indeed buying a crossover. And after spending some time driving a crossover and living with one, it's pretty easy to see why so many Americans choose to get an SUV over a sedan like this. I mean, yes, Camrys have always had relatively roomy back seats, roomy interiors. However, the trunk capacity of sedans pretty much limits you. The lower ground clearance of a sedan also makes these feel a little bit less rugged, a little bit less capable. Even though Toyota did add all-wheel drive this year, you still are, are of course faced with the limitations, the hauling and towing capabilities that you get with an SUV just far exceed a sedan like this. And when you factor in the price, this is where things get a little bit interesting because Camrys start at around $25,000 for a base version. For around $1,300 more, you could get a Toyota RAV4. And then if you want to add all-wheel drive, it comes out to be roughly around $2,500 more, which isn't really that much more money considering the fact that most people in America are spending over $35,000 for a new vehicle today, which is right around where a Camry and a RAV4 top out. So for around the same money, you get a vehicle that has way more capability, way more space on the inside and in the trunk, more towing capability, and just a much more rugged image. And it's pretty easy to see why last year Toyota managed to sell around 430,000 RAV4 fours while at the same time they did around 294,000 Camrys. The RAV4 has effectively taken the role as the best-selling Toyota in the lineup and it essentially is taking all of the numbers that the Camry used to get and I'm not entirely sure how Toyota can fix that. It's really just what the market wants. Everybody in America wants crossovers and we're seeing that of course along the entire portfolio of other manufacturers. Honda, their crosstown rival, managed to sell just under 200,000 Accords. So Toyota still did 100,000 more Camrys than Accords. And then Nissan with their Altima, well, Toyota did twice as many Camrys as they did with Altimas. Nissan only sold around 140,000 Altimas here in the US last year. Now my tester here with a total price of around 29,800 bucks is missing some features like keyless entry. There's no button here where I can remotely open the trunk. I have to use the fob or a button on the fob to do that. It also has no smart entry. So I have to actually take the key out I can't tell you how long it's been since I haven't, I've had to do that on a modern car. And even though this car has Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, it's still missing the basic feature, basic safety feature that most people want, and that's blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. You need to spend another $1,300 to add a convenience package to throw in that. And if you guys want a sunroof, it's not available on the SE. You gotta step it up to an XLE, an XSE, or a higher trim of the Camry to get that premium feature. So really where Toyota is starting to definitely fall a little bit here is the fact that some of their Korean rivals make me feel like I'm getting a lot more than what I actually paid versus Toyota. I just want them to throw me a bone here and there. There are aspects of this car that remind me that it's a great vehicle, but also shows me that Toyota still likes to play it a little too safe and the car just doesn't stand out. Even though the SE and XSE version looks a lot better than past Camrys. The interior of this car just makes it feel a lot like something that you'd find at an airport rental counter as opposed to something that you would 
want to or aspire to own, which is what Camrys used to feel like in the past. Well, with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video talking about the history of the Camry and trying to figure out why it's been losing market share. Basically, the Toyota RAV4 is that reason. But if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.